Hey guys, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. I really do appreciate it. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel, the best way that you can do that, if you're not already, please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so you can catch up on all the new stuff that's coming out or check out things that I've put out in the past. If you're already subscribed, another good way to do that is to comment down below, give me a thumbs up, and then share it with your friends. That's one of the best ways that you guys can help out the channel. With that being said, what is the most unique firearm that you guys own or want? Sound off in the comment section down below because that's kind of what we're talking about in this video. We're gonna be talking about the HK G36C from Tommy Built. This is technically their T36C and this is the most unique firearm that I own in my collection. And one of the firearms that's been on my bucket list for almost two decades now. And the reason for that, I'm gonna geek out a little bit, but <laughs> the reason why I love this so much is uh, back in 2000, I was big into PC gaming. And one of the favorite games that I had was Ghost Recon. One of the first Ghost Recons that ever came out. They had a G36, this the standard uh, rifle in that. And I fell in love with it. Now, once the carbines started to come out and you started seeing more and more pictures of them out and about. Uh, I started looking at them and I was like, man, this thing looks like the M41 pulse rifle from the movie Aliens, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. So couple those two things together and naturally this was going to be on my bucket list. I had to get my hands on one of these. Lucky enough for me, a friend of mine was selling one of these and um, I just got my stimulus check. So why the heck not, right? <laughs> So in this video, we're going to talk about an overview of what's going on with this uh, firearm. We're going to talk about a little bit of the history behind it and the controversy behind the G36, the things that I like about this, and then the things that I need to improve or things that are kind of a bit of a concern in case you guys are interested in picking one of these up for yourself. Before we get into all of that, though, I want to say a special thank you to Big Daddy Unlimited. They are partially sponsoring this video. And if you guys are not familiar with Big Daddy Unlimited, I've got a link down below. You guys can check them out. They are a subscription-based website for you to pick up firearms and firearms accessories. So if you guys are interested in that, head on down into the link below. It's a fitandfire.com link and uh, it will send you directly over to where you need to uh, check things out. All right, let's get into it. The G36C from Tommy Belt. Uh, this is going to be a very interesting rifle. It's completely a departure from the AR-15, from what I'm used to, and that's kind of been the trend for the last 10 to 12 months. I have been walking away from the AR-15 just to expand my horizons a little bit and understand different platforms. This is going to be one of those rifles, firearms, excuse me, firearms, that <laughs> is going to help me expand my horizons a little bit. So let's talk about exactly what's going on with this. First and foremost, it's going to have a 9.4 inch, one and seven inch twist 5.56 barrel. It is capped off with one of Tommy Belt's uh, flash hiders. These are going to be pretty standard for the G36s and the T36s that you're going to find from Tommy Belt. Normally you're going to find a polymer handguard on the uh, front here, but this has been upgraded with the BNT uh, rail system, so that's pretty cool. The receiver is going to be a injection molded glass filled nylon receiver, and so that's going to actually help conserve weight when it comes to uh, this weapon, so that's pretty cool as well. And that's kind of the big thing when it comes to the G36 and why it was adopted by the Bundeswehr or the German army back in 1998. Uh, and we'll get to that here in just a second. But it is typically going to be lighter than what you can find most ARs. This rail section on the top here is integrated into the upper receiver. You have the ability to swap these out if you wanted to, and uh, that's something I may actually consider doing here in the future. I will get into that here in just a bit. Ambidextrous controls on the safety selector and the charging handle. This charging handle here has the ability to flip out on either side of the firearm, which is pretty awesome, and it will return to its stowed position after you charge and release the charging handle, it will move forward and then uh, move into its stowed position. It's pretty nice. The trigger group 
here is the integrated pistol grip trigger group, uh, much like a MP5, and is easily taken out by removing these two pins, or excuse me, these two pins here, and you will be able to remove the, the pistol grip and trigger group along with the magazine well as well, and that's part of the disassembly. Back here, we have a Gearhead Works tail hook. I didn't think that I was going to like it, but so far I have actually really enjoyed it, and it is foldable for storage. So that basically covers everything going on with the G36C. Uh, these are going to be HK proprietary magazines to the G36, and we'll get into these here in just a second. All right, so let's get into a little bit of the history with the G36 and a little bit of the controversy as well. So like I had mentioned, this was adopted by the Bundeswehr, or the German army in 1998, and this was a major step forward when it comes to battle rifles being adopted by major militaries. One of the major reasons why it was a step forward is because this is by and large a polymer-based battle rifle, whereas like the AR-15 is going to be a uh, aluminum, a forged aluminum based firearm where you have an upper and a lower receiver that's made out of forged aluminum. This is going to have a polymer receiver. The trigger group here is polymer. Pretty much everything on here is going to be of a polymer um, material with the exception of the internal components, uh, trunnions, uh, barrel, so on and so forth. So that did a lot to conserve weight uh, for soldiers in the field. Now the controversy behind this firearm comes from a claim here in the last, I'd say five, maybe 10 years, that you're going to end up getting a point of impact shift as this firearm heats up. According to the claim, after 60 rounds, the polymer will heat up so much that the trunnion will actually move and shift the barrel so that uh, as you shoot, you're looking at approximately 20 centimeters shift in zero at 200 meters, which is approximately um, 10, 10 inches thereabout, if my math is correct. And that's pretty significant. But that claim isn't necessarily uh, supported in reality. Not sure exactly where they came about this claim. I know that Ian and Carl from InRange TV has done a great job in talking about what's going on with the claims of or issues with the G36. They even did a video uh, where they pretty much disproved the point of impact shift after the firearm heating up. And they used two different Tommy built rifles, one that was uh, made of com completely HK parts and one that was made of some of the Tommy built parts as well. So there's a little bit of a history and overview of what's going on with this firearm. Now let's talk about the things that I really do like about this. First and foremost is it's not an AR. I've already kind of mentioned that already. And uh, I wanted to find something that I could run at the range uh, that was different than an AR-15. And this is going to be it. Still using the 5.56 NATO round. So there's no need for me to you know, go out and find a different caliber, which is pretty awesome as well. And then the next big thing that I really do like about this firearm is the fact that the magazines are proprietary to the firearm itself, and that has its pros and cons, but you can actually put these magazines together and pretty much strap them side by side. Um, a lot of people don't really like that idea because it adds a lot of weight to the firearm, but then again, there are also a lot of people who are running D60s, uh, so this gives you the option to do that as well. Another great thing about the G36 is if you don't want to buy the proprietary magazines from HK, you can also pick up G36 magazines from Magpul as well. I don't have any of those as of yet, but I do plan on buying some of those and, and checking those out to see how well they run with this platform. The next thing I like about it is the fact that it is a short stroke gas piston system. So it's going to run a little bit cleaner than an AR-15. I've put about 300 rounds through this and for 
the most part, it's still fairly clean as I disassemble it and take a look at the uh, internals. So that's something I really do like. I also like the fact that uh, I am able to fold this brace down. So in transport, it makes it a lot more easy for me to store it in my truck. Um, should I wanna keep it with me if I go on a trip or something like that, or if I'm just going to the range, I don't have a large firearm to deal with in transporting. So that's something that I really like as well. Disassembly on this is extremely easy. You just pop these two pins right here, remove the uh, brace on the backside and all the guts basically just fall out. The handguard up here is easily removed by one pin as well. And you can disassemble it lickety split. So we'll do a video in the future on how to disassemble this and how to clean it as well. All right, so every firearm is going to have uh, its deficiencies. No firearm out there is perfect. Um, ARs have their problems, AK have their problems, FALs have their problems, and the G36 has its problems as well. First and foremost, uh, there is no bolt release on the standard G36s. Uh, this does actually have a bolt release, and you will see that right here on this piece right there, release it just by pressing down on that lever. Now, one of the biggest problems with that is the fact that the bolt release is integrated into the trigger guard. So if you're going to use your index finger, kind of like a bad lever to release the bolt, uh, then you are placing your finger into the trigger guard without putting your finger on the trigger. And if you're in a stressful situation, you may inadvertently pull the trigger at the same time and have a negligent discharge. Uh, so a lot of people, I understand, have problems with any type of um, you know, mechanism inside the trigger guard. Totally understand that, totally agree with it. Um, and uh, one of the ways that I have found to mitigate that is as I, load a new magazine, I'm using my non-firing thumb to actuate that and just kind of hooking in and pressing down on that lever. And I kind of keep my booger hook off the bang switch as much as I possibly can. The next thing that is uh, a bit of a concern with a lot of people with the G36 is that the manual of arms is completely different than the AR-15. Again, it doesn't have a bolt release standard on the G36, so when inserting a magazine into it, uh, realistically, you're supposed to be running the charging handle as well, very similar to the AK-47. Where this differs from the AK when it comes to the manual of arms is the fact that this will have a last round bolt hold open and the bolt will stay locked into position as you swap magazines. So your charging handle should be out, place the magazine in, pull and release and you're ready to go. So uh, manual of arms is a little bit different. This setup as well with the tail hook is a little bit cumbersome. I have noticed that as I am bringing my firearm up to engage a target, the tail hook has gotten caught in my um, body armor if I'm wearing body armor at the range. So that's something I'm gonna have to work around as well. So. A lot of different things I'm going to have to kind of retrain myself uh, on running this, uh, running this firearm. Oh, let me talk about the sights here real quick. The G36 sights uh, are actually pretty interesting. They do have uh, different diopters here on the rear sight for you to flip up so you can either get a 300 uh, meter aperture or a 100 meter aperture as well. All of the zero adjustments are going to be made with the rear sight, so you're gonna to have to have an Allen, uh, an Allen wrench to adjust windage and elevation. And then the front sight post is a hooded polymer front sight post. It's actually uh, fairly thick, so accuracy on this for me at 25 meters was about, oh, I'd say probably about uh, two and a half to three inches, which for a lot of people is unacceptable at that distance. But you also have to take in consideration these are mainly for kind of CQB type of stuff. Uh, so minute of man at 50 yards or less. And uh, in addition to that, these apertures are pretty large. So 
with that being large aperture, my ability to shoot, I'm sure that this is actually a little bit more accurate. I did put the red dot on after uh, I did my zeroing on the iron sights and I should be able to get a little bit more accuracy out of the firearm with the red dot than I do with the sights. I did talk about how I'm planning on changing out this rail for a rail that does not have the sights and the reason for that is to be frankly honest with you these sights are mediocre at best. In addition to that with this red dot the red dot is hitting the 12 o'clock position of the hood on the front sight post so I'm going to have to remove these sights or just get a brand new uh, rail on this to um, basically be able to put flip up sights instead of these standard G36 sights. Not a fan of those, but that's kind of an easy fix for me. I can go ahead and uh, drop some coin to swap out this rail and we'll be good to go. Run the same red dot. This is a primary arms micro red dot. Um, pretty simple to use. Uh, it's durable. I like it, so I'm going to run it. That basically covers everything going on with the G36. Let me know what you guys think. Sound off in the comment sections down below. Would this be a rifle that you would choose over an AR-15 or over an AK? When it comes to non-mainstream firearms, which ones are your favorite? Sound off in the comment section down below. I would really appreciate it. With that being said, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. Thank you so much to my Patreon crew. I really do appreciate all of the support to the channel. Your financial contribution to the channel is greatly appreciated and keeps me going on a weekly basis. So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. Thanks so much as always, freedom through strength. Take it easy, y'all. We'll see you later. Bye.